What is up, you two? James back here. Welcome back to another episode of VGC 2019 Backtrack Battles. Today is the last episode. We're using the Xerneas Lunala team with Xerneas Lunala, Crobat, Toxic Crow, Carton, and Hitmontop. We've had an amazing record with this team so far. If you haven't checked out the pre previous episodes, I highly recommend go check it out. But I don't know. This is a team. I feel like it's only lost one game or maybe two. I know I've lost a few on off camera. I know that for sure. But we've been on a pretty hot winning streak so far, so I'm pretty happy about that. Uh, we're almost into 1700s, which is pretty cool. And yeah, we'll see if we can pull through. And yeah, I haven't really had much time to play with this team. Uh, I really have only played it at the beginning when I first made it. And yeah, I haven't really had much time recently when I've been recording these videos because of the fact that I have been preparing for Brazil. I've had midterms to study for. Uh, before leaving, this is being recorded by the way before Brazil. When you're watching this, is probably Brazil's either happening or it already happened, so I don't know what schedule it's going to be on. But yeah, basically, yeah, I'm just hoping that I do well in Brazil to the future me. <laughs> but we'll see, we'll see, we'll see how it goes. But yeah, I haven't played too much games with this team, but I mean, this team's been putting in a ton of work, I think. Uh, I think Xerneas is just so strong. Xerneas and Lunal have definitely been like insane powerhouses and just the uh, extra support with the fake out, uh, double fake out. Cartana has been putting in quite a bit of work. I think it's just been pretty strong overall. I really do like him on top on this team though. I think uh, him on top has been pretty clutch over like the standard and Cinero. I really like him on top on this team. Ejects button uh, for repositioning, wide guard. Uh, Opponents and Cinero. I'm not sure how much we've used Wide Guard, but it's been pretty helpful. But yeah, I think uh, it's definitely been one of the key members to this team. I think has been hit on top. But it looks like it's, we're taking quite a while to find a first game, so we'll be right back with the first game of today's episode. All right, we got Adrian from Canada as our first opponent of today. Bring a Ditto with Kyogre Lunala. Interesting. Uh, Kyogre, Lunala, Tapu Lele, the Ferrothorn, Incineroar, and that Ditto. So, oh, this is gonna be a tough one. Also, really depends on that item on the uh, Kyogre. Um, do I like him? I don't want to bring here, cause. Cartana, Lunala, Toxic Rook are definitely coming, right? It's my fourth member that I'm debating about. Him on top or Xerneas? Him on top, fake out pressure, wide guard, problems. It gets hard shut down by um, Lunala and the... It gets shut down by the top of Lele and the uh, Lunala. It might be Psychic Seed, though. Could be Psychic Seed on Lunala. I want to leave Lunala Cartana, I think. I think Xerneas just because it's a better damage dealer, and I'll have Toxic Hook in the back. I think Lunala is going to be star member of this game, but I definitely could see my. Um, I could definitely see myself oh, have having Xerneas be the star member. I just don't know if you bring. Ditto. I don't think you bring Ferrothorn. You bring Incineroar, you bring Lunala. I'm not sure if you bring Lele. I'm not even sure if you bring Ogre. There are like multiple mons you could opt not to bring here, but I think Lunala Cartana is pretty safe. Uh, let's see. Kyogre and Incineroar. I can't figure it out if it's Scarf. Ooh. Isn't this fine though? I could go Toxic Rook right here. I just. I would assume it's Scarf Kyogre because they tend to be Scarf on this team. If I lose my Assault Vest, it's not a big deal. I think I'm just going to go Toxic Kirk right here and Protect. Because I don't think I lose much other than potentially my Assault Vest on my uh, Lunala. I'm worried about my position the following turn though because I could definitely see Lunala coming in. For the Kyogre. Because I don't think it would let me get a fake out and a leaf blade off. Huh. We'll go Toxic Croak. I can also see Lele coming out. Ooh. Don't want to risk that. Or Spout. 
and should be knockoff if you didn't go for fake out. You just left it in. I could have leap bladed. Oh, it's a U turn. Huh. Okay. Uh, not sure about the U turn play. You really left a coyote vulnerable there. Cause I won't mind that too much though. I'm gonna leap blade the Incineroar. I think I'm doubling up the Incineroar. <sighs> the Incineroar could easily switch in. But would you let me get your Kyogre here? Uh, decisions, decisions. I gotta call this right too. Because I feel like I'm in a bad position if I don't. I'd rather you not reposition Incineroar. If I can get rid of Incineroar, my Lunala is pretty healthy. <sighs> that means you should save Incineroar always. Yep. Oh, but ditto. I guess that's not the worst, but that's not the best either. I get to find out if it's Scarf on the Kyogre. Oh, now you have Faint option too. Oh, shoot. That was a really poor play I made. I really disagree with my play there, but uh, I shouldn't have let it. He's playing aggressive with the Kyogre. It's working out for him. I should have leap played it. Actually, it should be red card on the Doodle then. Critical hit. It's not even red card. Are you Scarf? No, you can't be Scarf either. What's your item? Also, why did I just did so much damage to that dude? Oh, jeez. Um. Don't know what your game is here, but I'm gonna protect Cortana. Even if you feign here, I at least get a low kick into the Kyogre, and I could maybe Geomancy here. You're just gonna fake out my Toxic Croak, so we're just gonna basically be in the same position as before. I'd rather low kick the, uh, I'd rather knock off the, um, Kyogre slot because if Incineroar gets in, at least I get something compared to a Leaf Blade, which doesn't get me anything. Uh, you might faint here. I think faint switch out to Kyogre is your best play. Yeah. But Ditto switching out Incineroar? I guess that works out for me, technically. Uh, it's still tricky. I don't like my position I've been in this game at all so far. Yeah, we're gonna see Water Spout. Yeah, I've been given opportunities to handle this Kyogre and I just haven't taken any of them. So, low kick. Yeah, and I haven't really weakened the damage of Kyogre yet. I think I'm just gonna go Xerneas here. We also don't know who's in the back, and I just lost my Kartana. I would assume Lunala at this point. You didn't bring out Lele. I thought you would have brought out Lele too. That, I guess, yeah, double finding movement to Incineroar was just such a bad play. Because Lele could have came in for that slot, and you could just water spout it. So yeah, that was definitely a terrible play. Um, should be the last turn of rain, at least. That's a positive. Here's the thing. Are you going to fake out, or are you going to U-turn? We'll find out. I do want damage into Incineroar though, if I can. Fake out into the Toxic Croak. War Spout. I mean, my Toxic Croak's still doing a ton of work here. What do you even switch out to if your Kyogre retreats? I mean, I think I'm still gonna low kick Moonblast D Incineroar if I can, because if I can get rid of Incineroar, I'm in a good position. I'm not gonna Geo here, because I'm worried about Roar, and I don't want Roar coming out, if anything. Does good damage to Xerneas. Oh, it's a Salt Vest Incineroar, what? And it just goes for Flare Blitz. Into Zonius. Oh, I could have just geoed. If I geoed, I would have been in an amazing spot, but I didn't think my opponent would let me get that. Um, that's frustrating. How many water spots do you have left? I'm gonna make the obvious protect. Maybe it wasn't the best. Yeah, I want to make the obvious protect play, actually, yeah. Although, I think I could Geo here. We're going to see Incineroar Retreat into the top of Lele. Oh! Okay, something something good went for, something went good for me. Something actually went good for me. I'll definitely take that. 
Because, yeah, you're staying in with both. I get a poison jab off. I mean, I poison jab just to cover the ditto coming in, because I'm pretty sure poison jab does more to Toxic Croak. So, uh, if we can get a knockout on a Lele, that'd be amazing. But we're minus one or minus two or something. Yeah. How many water spots does he have left? Let's go Lunala, because I'd rather Lunala take a water spot Psychic than losing Toxic Croak. Because I think if I have Lunala next to uh, Toxic Croak, I still have a chance to win. I'm going to attempt to Geo if he switches out here. The good point is my opponent can no longer go for Fake Out, so that's a good sign. Yeah, that's really good for me. Uh, let's see how much War Spot does. Shaw Shield, I hang on. I really am hoping that my Luna survives another one. You're going to see uh, the Psy Shock. Yeah, I'll, I'll live another one. I'm not sure about a rain boosted one, though. We'll go Toxic Croak here. Um, hmm. Now it's a mind game. Do I, do I want to lock myself in the Psy Shock? Psy Shock might be better. I shock might be better. I'm gonna Psy shock and poison jab. Yeah, cause we're gonna see the Kyra retreat here into the Incineroar. Actually, should've double up the light like expected. I thought Ditto was coming for some reason. I should've expected Incineroar sack here so you can get Kyogre in a free position. Now I'm gonna have to hope Luna either lives a Scald. Oh, wait, what? Oh, that's even worse for me, actually. I would have preferred if I just got a Moon Guys Beam off. Oh, that's really bad. I gotta hope my opponent screws up now. That was really bad. Uh, what I expected was Lele to Protect there and uh, Ditto potentially coming in. I could have also seen the Ditto. I think Protecting Lele was what I expected. Maybe my opponent was worried about Tailwind, but... Oh, that puts me in a bad spot since I side shocked. I should have Moon Blast. Moon Guys Beamed. Yeah, because now you transform into my Lunala, and now I am in a terrible position. Yeah, I don't think I... I don't think I can win this. I realized my mistake. If I locked myself in the Moon Guys, maybe I had a chance. Or if I let... If I kept Incineroar stayed in, maybe I had a chance. Now I don't think I have a chance. Um, I gotta double up the Lunala slot. I gotta hope Psy Shock can knock out Thunder. Is that a water move? Wins the speed tie, gets the Psy Shock off. So that's game. Yeah. Oh, I really feel bad about how I played in that match. Sasha so gonna come out into the Lunala. I KO it too, so if I actually won the speed tie, I actually won the game. Uh, oh, wait, wait, wait. Hold up. Did Lunala move first before the Kyogre? Was it not Scarf Kyogre? No, it is Scarf Kyogre. We confirmed that. Didn't we? Yeah, because I'm timid Lunala, so it was Scarf Kyogre. I... Yeah, it had to be Scarf. Oh, no, no, I just lost the speed tie. Uh, Toxic Crook went down, and then I was confused for a second because I thought Toxic Crook moved for some reason. No, um. Actually, maybe I didn't mess up. Maybe the end game was still the same anyway, but I felt like maybe. Yeah, I think I should have Moon Guys Bean, though. Always. Yeah, I think. Moon Guys Beam always. I'm actually really surprised that Sashok actually KO'd the Ditto, which was not the ending I'm expecting. I guess maybe my game plan was still kind of alright if I locked myself in Sashok, but yeah, laying two free switch ins was not the call for sure. 
I needed to um, force one in and then handle it, it and then get a KO, double KO with one of either Kyogre or Lunala next to Incineroar. I feel like overall I just played the game poor. I'm really, uh, I'm really not happy about how I played that game, so I do apologize to the viewers out there. But yeah, that was definitely not uh, something that was great. Um, I just let the double fighting move was just, I think, the really bad turn that I think was. Like, my opponent definitely did play well. Like that's definitely what he should have. You should never lose your Incineroar when you have switch-ins, and I should have probably realized that. You had Lele as a switch and you had Lunala as a switch into double fighting move. That was definitely not the play, and yeah, I had like multiple opportunities to either knock off or knock out the Kyogre potentially, so yeah, definitely not happy about that, but we do live and learn, so yeah, I do realize I probably should have considered the risk versus reward there. But yeah, that's the first loss we're taking in quite a while, so unfortunately it looks like we're not going to continue our win streak here, but let's see if we can continue on. But yeah, I think overall I was just misplaying a bunch, and after going down a lot, it was just... At that point, it was just kind of discouraging for me. Um, also, my opponent kind of gave me some opportunities to come back. Like, if I geoed that one turn with Xerneas, I think I would have just won straight out there. Because it was Salt Vest Incineroar. I wasn't expecting Salt Vest Incineroar. I was thinking Barry, so I could Moonblast, low kick, knock out the Incineroar potentially, but instead what happened was it was a Salt Vest, so it could actually survive the Moonblast, plus the um, low kick, and that kind of screwed up my plans a lot more than I thought it would have. We got Nick here as our next opponent, though. We got Tapalele, Kyogre, Nick Krozma, uh, Tornadus, Kartana, and Aegislash. Interesting. We don't really see Aegislash that much, and, you know, Incineroar is probably the most used Pokemon right now in VGC, so... Kind of uh, no surprise we don't really see Age of Slash that much, especially with like powerhouses like Respecto and Nala. I don't know if a Moon Guys Moon knocks out Age of Slash though. Uh, probably does. If it doesn't, I guess we have an interesting note here. I think I want to go Toxic Croak. I want to go Toxic Croak. There's no um, Incineroar, which is good here for me. A little bit worried about. Yeah, I don't think. I think the Pokemon I like are Toxic Croak, Lunala, Hitmontop, and Cortana. Like, they're really effective in this matchup. I mean, if we think about it, Xerneas doesn't do too much. Maybe Kyogre, Lele, and Tornadus it can handle. Maybe Cartana if I uh, position right. But even if I'm bringing Double Fake Out in a position where it doesn't really like Double Fake Out, I mean, the hit on top with Intimidate as a pivot is really good here. And so is my Toxic Rogue just to absorb the... Well, just to prevent Kyogre from freely spamming uh, Scarf Water Spout. So, yeah, we'll see how this goes. Um, Tornadus Aegislash, an interesting lead. I could fake out the Tornadus and just Moon Guys being the Aegislash. Again, I don't think I have another play either. I really can't switch out in this position because nothing really wants to take a Shadow Ball from my side. And yeah, I'm not sure if Aegislash expects Moon Guys being, so I might as well figure out the calc now. I'd assume you have attack investment at least just so you can knock out Xerneas with a plus two gyro ball, but yeah, we'll see how this goes. It's interesting to see Aegislash Slash being brought here. I would assume Necrozma in the back. Um, either Lele, Kartan, or Kyogre in the back. Who knows? Uh, I can't really tell. Uh, we will get a fake out. Critical hit. Is that Tornado's bulky? Does it have bulk? Because it took it decently well if that's a crit. Yeah, I just knocked out the Age of Slash turn one, which is fantastic for me. I'm actually really surprised my opponent led the Age of Slash. Or even brought... Well, I'm surprised my opponent brought it. I guess it's not that bad against my team, but I'm surprised he led it turn one. That's a beautiful turn for me. Uh, what are we going to see from my opponent? Kyogre? Y you would have to double up a slot in order to knock it out. Cortana? I don't even know if that's good against me right now. Oh, but I definitely want to save the Toxic Crow because I think Toxic Crow is pretty good against my opponent's team. I'm going to go Hitmontop, and I do want to remove the threat of the Tornadus because uh, Hurricane is probably the biggest damage dealer to my Toxic Crow. And if I can trap Cartana in minus one, that's also pretty nice. And yeah, I'd rather make this play here. Because if him on top survives Hurricane, if that is what my opponent's going to throw out, I can just go out into my Toxic Croak, and then I have him on top and Toxic Croak still alive. So we'll see what comes out here. It could be knockoff and Illuminati as well, but it's actually just going to be a protect from Kartana, which is, <laughs> I don't know, the best thing I could probably ask for here. Tailwind going to come out, but that's fine. I have Fake Out Pressure now, and uh, yeah, 
I, this is looking pretty good for me. And also, like, we should not got turned out this year, I know. It has to be really bulky in order to live this. Yeah. We do not got turned out this. Great. And then... Kyogre or Necrozma? Either way, you don't have a fun time against my team, regardless. Yeah. Necrozma. Okay. I'm just gonna fake out the Necrozma... Go for our Moon Guys Beam into the Cartana. Actually, maybe I could have faked that Moon Guys Beam to Cartana because Cartana could have knockoff. Well, I think the Krasma gets knockoff too, right? Because I know Sogaleo gets knockoff as well, but I don't know. Either way, like, as long as I stall out this Tailwind efficiently, I should be good. I guess maybe it's a problem if I leave Necrozma alone too much. But again, Cortana's not threatening too much damage. The knockoff is not going to KO my Lunala thanks to Intimidate and Shadow Shield still being in effect. Yeah, I'm not sure if my opponent really has good options right here. And I don't know what this Necrozma has, but I don't want it to set up anything crazy. Which is why I'm going to just fake out. If he target him out, my hit on top, that's perfect for me. Because I get a uh, free switch into my Toxic Croak here. So, Leaf Blade into Lunala. You don't have knockoff. Or maybe you're saving it for a KO onto Lunala the following turn. Are you Sash? Yeah. Okay, so that's where the Sash was. So the Tornadus probably didn't have Sash. I wonder what item it was then. The Krasma flinches. All I need to do is get Toxic Croak in safely because then I'll go for Faint into the uh, Kartana and then it's Necrozma versus uh, either three or four of my Pokemon. And then I should have this game. I'm pretty sure it's like Photon Geyser. I guess you could double up my... Um, you could technically double up my Toxic Croak. I think I'd be okay with that too. I'd get a free switch in regardless. And Cartana's in a pretty good position regardless. Cartana actually gonna protect. No double up. Alright. Uh, not sure about the protect play. Both time guys are into... Yeah, him on top. Because if I had faint, it wouldn't matter. You might as well just attack because protect doesn't solve anything. At least you could get damage off, especially if we don't have protect. But now... Um, I might as well just get rid of your. Did I get rid of the item? Potentially activate a weakness policy? No. Always faint the Cartana, get rid of Cartana. Always Sacred Sword, the Necrozma. Even if it's like Ally Switch to Necrozma, if it gets it, that's fine too. Goes for a double protect, fails. Get the faint. Like, I just want Toxic Croak in safely because I don't. I guess maybe you leave. No, you would leaf late Sunsteel Strike if you're doubling up the uh, Lunala slot, which is why I made the play. Sacred Sword. Ooh, nice trick from there. Not sure how much it's going to save you, though. Uh, Talon Peter's out. I might as well just go for a... Faint Sacred Sword. I don't know. There's not much my opponent can do in this position that you're in. Like, I might as well just get every bit of damage I can. Earthquake? <laughs> okay. <laughs> that demon knock out Toxic Croak. <laughs> I guess they could sort off. Earthquake? Are you in this one? You, that was neutral. That was a neutral earthquake. Okay, I needed a laugh. Uh, we'll go for knockoff. We'll go in the hit on top here. We'll just stall out the- we might as well just save as many Intimidate Mons as possible. And if you go for Photon Geyser and can't knock out Kartana, that should be game because a knockoff should KO you. And if it doesn't KO you, you should put you in range of Faint. So yeah, you're just gonna go for Earthquake again. <laughs> earthquake. Doesn't KO, I get my Jackpots in out. So I guess we go, uh... Toxic Croak here, we have Fake Out Pressure again. <laughs> The fact that they even knock out Toxic Kirk. Oh, wait, it's not four times effective. What am I saying? I thought it was four times effective for some reason. No, it's only two times. Knock off in the Necrozma. Finishes off Necrozma. And that's going to be a good game to my opponent. So, overall, it was weakness policy. Yeah. I think overall it was that game. Uh. I don't know, like, Lunala just overpowered my opponent. I think that was basically the case. My opponent lost too many tools right away. It was. 
I just KO'd 8 to slash turn 1. Cartana was in a really big threat. You had no way to really deal with my Lunala effectively, and Lunala was just able to sweep with the fake out support. So yeah, again, I think the sucking the first game we had was, I think there were so many different plays I could um, have made, and I do want to look back at that game in my free time while editing this video and figure out all the different plays I could have made because there were probably a lot of there were probably a lot of plays I could have made differently, um, especially if I was able. I'm actually just really surprised there was no Lunala, but maybe like there was something, maybe it wasn't max speed Lunala, so maybe my opponent thought, oh, there's no point, because my, uh, I'd be able to just KO my opponent's Lunala, because he would assume most of these uh, Xerneas Lunala teams tend to have a choice specs on the Lunala, or sometimes they run the, uh, what's the plate called, the spooky plate? But yeah, unfortunately our win streak ended, so we couldn't get the big win streak, but I think that's I mean that's pretty good regardless. I don't really mind like win streaks are nice, but learning is so much more. And yes, I am so very upset about how I played the first game. But I'm gonna take that and I'm gonna make sure I don't make those mistakes again. So hope that everyone enjoyed today's episode of VGC twenty nineteen Back to Battles. The next time we'll be using a brand new team. But if you do wanna see this team on the QR code on the global link and if you do like this video I highly recommend hitting that like button 175 likes for all the videos we use this team within two weeks of today's episode and if we do hit it we will have a QR code on the global link otherwise you can try out the team with the paste pin down below in the description as well as my social media always feel free to check out my Twitter Instagram all that good stuff twitch for awesome VGC 2019 live streams and I should be back to streaming once uh, Brazil is over and yeah we'll see how I do at Brazil too hope everyone enjoyed if you did enjoy it well thank you so much otherwise that's pretty much it have a great day people until we battle again I'll catch y'all later